so that was the strategy we changed to uh, Clayton. It was to find an optimal level of soybean meal. Soybean meal will be replacing DDGs and also fat because fat became inaccessible to us. And that diet then, when we compared that in the field, it resulted in the most in a diet that maximized the growth performance, maximized the carcass weight during summer months. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today I'm joined by Dr. David Rosero and Dr. Dean Boyd. Dr. Rosero is an assistant professor of animal science at Iowa State University, and Dr. Boyd is a consultant for Nutrition Research, LLC. In this edition, brought to you by U.S. Soy, Dr. David Rosero and Dr. R. Dean Boyd discuss how pig producers often face a decline in carcass weight due to the adverse impact of heat stress on pigs and the replacement of soybean meal with intake-reducing ingredients. Leveraging on extensive research that highlights the critical role of soybean meal in enhancing the growth performance of pigs, they are proposing a commercially proven summer nutrition program that uses higher levels of soybean meal and excludes feed intake reducing ingredients. So I see you two have done some work on recovering some of that diminished carcass weights that we typically see in these Midwestern summers. So to start, to what extent does the summer heat impact carcass weight? Uh, carcass weight during the months of May through August tends to be about 6 to 12 pounds below target. Clayton, uh, one clarification is we view this as a seasonal dip because it often starts before heat is even an issue. Gotcha. So with this issue, do producers typically face this issue year in and year out, or is it only under more extremely hot conditions? This is a recurring problem without fail. And uh, it's worse during the summer uh, when you have a high heat index. Uh, for sure, when we lost paling, which tended to lift the summer uh, carcass weight, uh, once it was lifted, that brought us to our knees to see how low carcass dip uh, could become. And, and with this carcass dip that you see, what are some of the economic implications that producers can expect? May through August time frame, uh, it's normally uh, is about the highest price, uh, market price in the year, and sometimes the only time you can make money. Uh, so money loss uh, during this period can range from five and a half to 11 pounds per carcass weight if you have a $90 per hundred weight basis. But uh, this isn't all the story. This doesn't include the fact that in uh, the seasonal dip, the percent pigs that are too light for the plant often double. So your discount increases as well. So do we typically see this carcass weight decline earlier in the summer or sometimes even sooner? It's not uncommon to start having a uh, decline in carcass weight in the winter and summer months because of swine respiratory disease. And so those that uh, are faced with a significant de disease challenge can have carcass weights already four to six pounds less before summer heat even begins. Gotcha. And Dr. Osero, I see you've done some research on this particular topic, specifically using soybean meal. So how can the decline of carcass weights during summer be minimized with the, with the strategic use of high levels of soybean meal and grow finish diets? Thank you, Clayton. And, and Dr. Boyd, thank you for uh, setting up the, 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 the context here. Really good. Uh, during my time at Hanor, when I was uh, leading the nutrition team, we had to go through changes in the strategy on feeding pigs during summer months. In the past, and because we had accessible uh, prices for fat, that will be into our diets. Today, uh, that's not the case. We have to move to a different strategy to capture uh, growth performance. At the same time, in those old diets, we had replaced soybean meal with DDGs, which led, that, led us into a question if, if this will be a um, feed intake reducing ingredient that need to be replaced. That along with soybean meal, the studies that we conducted at Hanor, uh, then we, find, we found optimal levels of soybean meal that will improve performance, especially during summer months. Um, so that was the strategy we changed to, uh, Clayton. It was to find an optimal level of soybean meal. 
Soybean meal will be replacing DDGs and also fat because fat became inaccessible to us. And that diet then, when we compared that in the field, it resulted in the most, um, in a diet that maximized the growth performance, maximized the carcass weight during summer months. And so if you think about the cost of the diet in rel relative to a high energy diet, it was less expensive. So um, we then had a more profitable diet when we implemented high levels of soybean meal. So what are some of the implications of the use of feed intake reducing ingredients in grow finish diets, especially during the summer? Uh, Clayton, during the summer, we will have an impact of, of heat stress on the feed intake of pigs, uh, which we might double dip in if we use feed ingredients that reduce intake as well. And I'm referring to ingredients like uh, DDGs, corn germ, wheat meats. It might be the impact of NDF levels into those ingredients. Um, that's something we need to avoid in designing the strategy is taking in, con in consideration the impact of these ingredients in the feed intake and not double dipping into the heat stress impact. Gotcha. So how do nutritionists and producers need to design their feeding programs for growing pigs to be sold during summer months? So I will take the two uh, considerations we just described. One, looking to what is the optimal level of soybean meal that the pigs will need to increase the growth performance. Um, and that will need to be started early on um, for pigs that are going to be sold during summer months. And the second aspect will be to avoid the use of feed ingredients that reduce feed intake of pigs, especially during those summer months. So when do you think these summer feeding programs should begin? Sometime in late spring or sometimes even earlier than that? Well, uh, we have to remember that we uh, we spend the growth finish phase of the pigs. We start the growth finish phase of the pigs early on the spring. So I will say um, February, March time is when we need to start adding those pounds and feeding these diets to a pig. So then um, as we put the diet together, the pigs receive the complete program um, during those months and, and they are sold from June to September time, right? We're targeting the summer, uh, summer months. So based on your experience, if a producer is to consider adding extra growing time during the summer months, how many more days would be required to reduce that summer carcass dip? Clayton, that's, uh, that's a good question and, and a very important consideration. So a producer might ask himself, uh, if, if in addition to this strategy or maybe in, as an alternative strategy, uh, he will need to add days during the summer to add back the weight, uh, the carcass weight that he's losing during summer months. Uh, my suggestion will be uh, that depending on the pounds that you are um, anticipating to lose, it might be six to 12 pounds that we discussed early. It might be three to five um, days. So planning on adding uh, probably one extra week. But one, one important aspect of this, Clayton, is that we, um, in, in our systems, uh, we, if we add a space, that space is going to be there for the rest of the year. And so producers will also need to consider that I'm adding extra costs for the rest of the year if I need to have extra space during the summer. Gotcha. And one last question to wrap things up. And this is a question for both you guys. What's the most important thing nutritionists should take away from this discussion? In the seasonal, the late spring, summer months, you cannot feed diets that inhibit uh, the intake of the diets because of the ingredients they have. And intake and uh, reducing ingredients such as DDGs, corn germ, mids, as David had indicated, is a problem, pure and simple. And this is not a heat increment issue. Uh, it's an intake issue. Heat increments the, is the ant in the room. The heat intake is the elephant in the room. The second point is that maximum profit, which is what we're supposed to be interested in, requires the nutritionist step away from the computer where you get the invoice price to a profit optimum um, uh, spreadsheet uh, to calculate the conditions under which you optimize your profit. You won't do that at the formulation desk. I will say, Clayton, um, this is a time where we we have a big opportunity in front of us. Um, we're losing carcass weight 
but at, at the time where the price of the pig is is the highest during the year. So that gave us a, a very big opportunity in capturing revenue. Um, so I think nutritionist producers will think will need to think about uh, ingredients that will enhance the crop performance of pigs as well as ingredients that reduce intake, um, as we have alluded into this discussion. I think if one is to avoid these ingredients, I will maximize what I can achieve with my diet, if it's to be increasing the performance of pigs. Well, thank you both for coming on the show, and also thank you to our sponsor for this episode, U.S. Soy. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.